Welcome to another exciting tutorial. I am Timothy Santana. That's creepy. Right, so what we're gonna be getting into today is I'm gonna be demonstrating how to create this effect. Right, so this effect is kind of like a textured, you can see these very natural textures that it has that are beautiful and uh, the sort of halftone effect, this very retro kind of look. Uh, like an old retro poster kind of thing, uh, which you can use a lot of the tips I'm going to show you today how to create various you know types of content, whatever your heart desires. It's just little tips and tricks along the way um, for you guys to pick up on and uh, do your own cool creative stuff with. Uh, but I figured I'd show you, so we're going to get right into it. Tutorial. All right, so I've got this image loaded in Photoshop, and I've got all my stuff already here labeled color-coded everything like that uh, that's mainly because I noticed the videos are a little bit lengthy so in order to save time and shorten them uh, I'm just gonna break it down exactly how I did it step by step so uh, we're gonna backtrack here deconstruction uh, with this image what you're gonna do first is you're gonna create a, a mask right so I've already got my mask here you're gonna refine it and stuff like that and pretty much you're gonna you're gonna choose your own image choose your own subject and you're gonna want to isolate that subject so I'm just gonna go ahead and enable it Right now, it's not the best mask in the world, but just for the sake of this tutorial, you know, this will work. This will be fine. All right. And so the next step that you're going to do after you create a mask around the subject that you want, you're going to go ahead and we're just going to do this just to just to show you exactly how I did this. So you're going to go ahead uh, holding alt. I'm just going to drag and drop above it a new layer and I'm going to rename that layer. Start image. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna right click on the layer, our new layer, and we're gonna convert to smart object. And then we're gonna go ahead, right click again, we're gonna rasterize the layer. Right, so this is gonna allow us to use the smudge tool which we're going to select next. Once we get the smudge tool here, we're gonna use a brush kind of like this here. Again, I'm just using brushes that are default in Photoshop because I just wanna show how you can do this even with what comes, you know, default inside of Photoshop. So we're just going to select uh, this one here. This one I already have selected. This will work just fine. And uh, you can go ahead and scale it up or do whatever you need to to it. And what I pretty much did here was I went in and you see the hair. What I did was I would just go along the waves of the hair and just smear them. See, and it kind of, what it kind of does is it, it, it softens it, it sort of, it, it sort of gives it like a painted effect. And you can go ahead and drag it out, you can do this, you know, like that. And you just mess around with it and you play with it, and if you mess up or whatever, you know, this is all non-destructive, so you can go ahead and, you know, hit that control Z. Um, and you just want to go ahead and play with it. And so just go along with the flow of the hair and... Uh, uh, you could just keep doing that, and it's just gonna give this, give it this kind of uh, painted effect. You know, it's gonna feel very, very painted. And then what you're gonna do with that? This is by no means perfect. Um, you can go ahead and refine and do it exactly the way that you want, the way that you desire, to the style that you want. Um, this is just to give you a demonstration. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna right click on the layer, convert it back to a smart object. And once we do that, we're gonna go up to filter, and we're going to apply a filter gallery. Once we're in here, I already have this set, uh, you're going to go to crosshatch, which is in the brush strokes. Uh, you just click that down. And then uh, these are my settings at the moment. You can go ahead and fine tune depending on how much you want and how little you want. So you just go ahead and just mess with some of those settings until you get something that's to your liking. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think we'll go with that. And we'll just go ahead and click OK. All right, so now we're just going to leave that the way it is. Um, you can always go back and adjust it. That's the great thing about having it as a smart object. You can always go back to your filter gallery and, you know, adjust it in any way, you know, adjust the, the parameters here, you know, and uh, get, you know, whatever it is you're looking for, for in case, like, later on you find something that you maybe want to change or, you know, it's not looking exactly the way that you want. You can fine-tune it and play with it. All right, so the reason why we keep our original image is because of this we're going to go ahead and drag and drop holding alt we're going to so that's going to duplicate it we're going to go ahead and right click and we're actually going to click convert to smart object 
with this, we're going to go up to filter. We're going to apply the filter gallery to this one as well. And what we're going to do is you're going to go down to sketch, open that up, and there's going to be what's called half tone pattern. You can apply that, right? And I've already got my settings sort of here. I think I'm going to bump this up to two. And the contrast, I think I want it to be... Let's try one. And you also want to make sure that your pattern type is on dot. All right, so we're going to click OK. Now we're going to get this funky sort of inverted negative image. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this, right, this layer. Uh, we're going to rename it. We're going to call this half tone, right? And we're going to go ahead and go to our uh, blend mode and set it to subtract. So. What we're going to do next is we're going to take down the opacity of this because you can see it's creating a very contrasty, not at all what the image used to look like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to drop the opacity. I'm going to set it to 39 because I know that that's going to work for this image. And so the difference is slight, but it's not so bad. Um, but as you can see, when we zoom in, we've got that halftone pattern, but it's kind of more natural because it's not like as harsh as it would be. It's sort of blended into it. So it's part of the texture, part of the texture of the image, which is what we're trying to get here. And so once we have that, we pretty much have our image. Now, all I did uh, for the background is um, I just created a background layer there, uh, a solid uh, color, and go ahead and fill it with whatever you want. I chose this color here, and uh, then I just duplicated that background uh, converted it to a smart object here. And then what I did is I just applied the same uh, filter gallery and just, there's my pattern there. I've got the halftone pattern going there. Uh, I just set the size to one and the contrast to six. You can adjust it to however you want. And so then after that, I just dropped the opacity down to 20. Of course, did the subtract on the blend mode. And we've got our background there. And it looks pretty good looks pretty good again you can adjust it adjust it to however you want and so that's pretty much uh, how it looks uh, so we've got got this one and uh, I've got another example here just to show you that it goes all the way around that's my beautiful wife <laughs> she's crazy um, yeah so this really works across the board you know you can apply this to anything any image and uh, it pretty much works. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do in that, cause this doesn't look super great yet. You know, this isn't exactly what I showed you. This isn't the full effect. Now the thing that you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to save this afterward, right? Because then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do your color grade, right? So when you're gonna do your color grade, whether you do it in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever, so you're gonna go ahead and save this as a JPEG because it's gonna be its own image, right? So you're gonna go ahead and save it. I already have it saved and uh, I like to do my color grading inside of Lightroom and you can see I have it already here. I mean, I have my own personal um, user presets that I've created and uh, just fine tuned here. Um, and this introducing some grain to it, it's definitely gonna sell the effect. Uh, you know, I like the sort of matted, you know, feel that it's got going on here, that sort of matte image, that fade. Um, so, you know, you just play around and you do your color grade afterward. I like to apply the effect to the image and then do the grade afterward because it just becomes embedded in the image, the effect, you know. So then you're doing the grade on top of everything, you know. It's the final step of how you want your image to look. So, yeah, so that's pretty much how you get the effect. Um, and I can show you right here, see? Before and after. And uh, that's pretty much our effect. And that's how you achieve it. And it's really simple. It's a simple thing to do. It's nothing complicated. You know, you probably could have figured this out yourself, but I figured I'd give you a hand and just make a tutorial on it. All right, if you guys found this tutorial helpful in any way, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe, definitely, so you can be notified of future videos and I uh, will be bringing more content to you. And feel free to leave in the comments below uh, any questions that you might have or suggestions for future tutorials or things that you guys might wanna know about, uh, no matter how simple. There's no such thing as a stupid question, only a question unasked. So, I am Timothy Santana and I will see you next time.